All right, welcome back to the recording. I think we are in recording number three of our tutorial series where we are looking at how to handle um, this concept or idea of roots behaving the way they actually do versus how they how we expect them to. More on that in a moment. Um, in previous tutorial videos, we looked at authentication, specifically on how we handle authentication against Dumbo Jupiter and how we can build classes that recycle other classes by using what are called mixins and inheritance and composition. Riveting stuff. Um, <laughs> from there, we moved on to actually building a root or a pair of roots. Um, how do I get content from Domo Jupiter? And how do I update content in Domo Jupiter? And one of the key things about roots and actually about all of the code that I write is I try to write as efficiently as possible and like compartmentalize my code into the right places. So with the class tutorial, we looked at saying, okay, um, different classes handle, well, different auth classes will handle different parts of authentication. And so they might need to be composed of different parts of each other. So we used object-oriented programming or class mix-ins and inheritance and composition to make that happen. That was great. On the roots side of things, we talked about compartmentalizing our code and using what's called a factory design pattern um, to say, okay, I want my root that hits the API to be exclusively responsible for constructing how do I hit the API. Now the question of how I handle authentication, not my roots problem, that's the auth objects problem. And we talked a whole bit about that. How do I construct the body for updating uh, content in Ju Domo Jupiter? Again, that's not the roots job. We have a whole series of functions around constructing bodies. That was the previous tutorials. Now we're going to look at this idea of, okay, I want my base root function to just interact with the API. And then I'm going to compartmentalize this idea of what does it actually do versus what do I want it to do. All right, let's jump in. So where can I see this? Hold on, I'll write some code here. Okay. Okay. I have a function called get Jupyter contents. That root will hit this content path and it will get my content. Now, if I were to print all of the content and search, I would not find my great demo. I would not find that file in the results because my great demo is in a subfolder called new folder. I promise you it's not there. And this distinction is this idea of, okay, how does the API behave? Well, it just gets the content in this path. How do I want it to behave? I want it to recursively get all of the content from the folders and subfolders. So again, distinction between what a base function versus what I want it to do. Now I have a choice. I could either implement get recursive content as a class and class method because how I want my API bit to behave, that's something that I get to define as a library builder. But I think everyone who hits this API would expect it to give a recursive response. So I'm gonna build the recursive function as a root function instead of as a class method. And you might say, well, why didn't Domo do this the first time? I mean, the, the honest answer is, well, depending on what your needs, it's probably more efficient to just give me the results of one folder instead of like recursively looping through all of the subfolders if all you actually need is that one folder. So there is a time and a place for a recursion. You might be saying, Jay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is recursion? Let's take a step back. Okay, recursion in functions is this idea of a function calling itself. That's recursive. So Let's take a look at that. Um, let me truncate this to just print zero to five. Okay, so recursive. Here. 
I have a function called get content recursive. And what does it do? Well, it says, here's this path. And I want to accumulate all of my content in a list called all rows. You don't know it's a list yet, but we'll see that in a moment. Debug PR, and I actually don't need this. I actually need return raw either. So I'm going to get rid of that one. OK. So um, all rows equals none. Now, uh, a lot of people, when they create an instance of a list, they might make the mistake, and I do mean mistake, of saying, ah, yes, the default value for all rows is an empty list. You're, that's bad handwriting. You shouldn't do that. If you want all rows to be an empty list, after you define um, the input variables, you'll say all rows is equal to all rows or an empty list. I don't know why. That's the right way to do it, but it will become important in just a moment. So what does my recursive function do? The first thing it does is it says, hey, get the content in this path that content so now my content list is whatever is in that response cool and now we're going to map over every object in my content list and I, I guess there's kind of two choices my contents can either be a file or it can be a directory right those are my two choices so if my content is not a directory it's probably safe to assume it's a file and I want to get the actual content, the definition of that file. So I need to run get Jupyter content for that object, that path. So we do that. And then we'll append the response to my all rows list. Remember earlier I instantiated an empty list. Now I have one thing in the list. This is a for loop. So as I go through the fourth third, fourth, and fifth thing in my list, I'll continue appending rows to, or sorry, appending files to my all rows list. Cool. What happens if I hit a directory? Well, if I hit a directory, I want to know the content of that directory. So I'm going to call get content recursive on this directory. It's going to pass in all rows into the get content recursive. And now as I'm in this subfolder, I come back up to the top. Well, did I pass in all rows? Yes, I did. So I'm not going to run this line. Or rather, I'll just keep it as it is. I'll get the content for that subfolder. I'll map over all of the content of that subfolder. And as I find more documents, I'll append it to all rows. If I find a subfolder within the subfolder, I'll do the thing recursively. A recursive function calls itself. That's all it is. At the end of the day, I'm going to take all rows and set that to my um, response and return my response. You might be wondering, why aren't I just returning, like, return all rows? Um, because all of my roots in my library, in order to yield a predictable response, will always return a response get data object. So I will say uh, response is the result of my initial get Jupyter content query. So I'm going to smash or replace rather response with all rows and return the response get data results. Cool, so that's recursion. The key element of this is understanding how lists work in functions. In a function, I think it's, uh, if you've done Visual Basic, we have this idea of pass by value or pass by reference. If I pass <clears throat> by value, I pass something uh, muta Im immutable, does not change. If I pass something by reference, it can change. Um, and I think that's still not a great uh, description and maybe inaccurate. So let me try this a slightly different way. Let's say I have x equals 15 and I print x at the end of this rainbow. You expect x to be 15. Okay, that's fine. Let's say I have a function called version and I pass in x of type integer 
and I say x plus equals 1. And let's say I call my fake recursion and say x equals x. All right, now there's, there's no typo, there's no trick to this. I don't have a capital and a lowercase, right? I have a function called my fake recursion. It receives a parameter called x. I plus equal 1. Maybe I even have a return equals true. Um, or maybe I even return x. Doesn't matter. Return x. My fake recursion, x equals, I pass in x, which is 15. I run my fake recursion, 15 plus 1 is equal to 16. I return x, but I don't set x equal to x. I didn't do that. So what do we expect the result to be? Is the result going to be 16 or is it going to be 15? I'm going to run my function. I'm going to get an invalid syntax error so you know I'm not cheating. <laughs> okay, x is still equal to 15. Terrible at explaining this, but the gist of it is, right, even though I pass x into my function, um, it doesn't pass by reference, it passes by value. It passed the value 15 into my fake recursion, and 15 plus 1 is 16. I can actually prove this. I can say print x. So it got to 16. I returned 16, but outside of the function, x is still equal to 15. Okay, that's that's how I think most people expect variables to work. Now, let's say x is a list. Like I said earlier, if I want to pass in a list that could be empty, I'm going to say none, and then I'll say x equals x or an empty list. And I'm going to say x dot append. Uh, I am in. Uh, new record, let's call it. Print. And I'm going to return x. But actually, just to prove the point, I'm not going to return x. I'm not going to return anything. Cool. Uh, let's see. x is equal to none. I pass in an empty list. I pass in x. What will I get? What will be the result? I didn't set. I'm not returning anything from my fake recursion. I'm not setting x equal to a value. I'm pretty sure I should get new record. Oh dear. That's not what I expected. Is that what did it? Oh, that's fascinating. I did not expect this interaction. Okay, so here, ah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, so here I define x as be containing original record. I write my function that says x is either equal to none, sorry, if x is equal to none, replace it with an empty list. This is this is where it happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's cool. Um, even if I take this out, I'm still going to get the same behavior. This. Yeah, this if I have an empty list. So if x is equal to blank is an empty list, um, 
this will interpret that x is equal to none or empty. And so it will actually replace it as an empty list. And so it will <laughs> set x to equal to, to something, uh, store it in memory that is not the same place as this x because it's an empty list, right? So here the result is going to be new, no, the, the result is gonna be an empty list. Pause. This is an empty list. X equals none. Or sorry, this is I pass in an empty list. Here it says X is equal to the reference to a memory space that is an empty list, or it's a new list. And because this evaluates over to the or to the empty list, I'm actually storing new record at a new place in memory. Let's assume that your spot in memory is equal to A, Shelf, uh, cell A1, right? When I run this, it says, is X, does X exist? And because it's an empty list, it's going to say false. And because this is false, we're going to set X inside my function equal to a new list, which is stored in a new spot in memory, A2. And so when I get to the end of my rainbow, out here, I'm saying, ooh, what is the value of x in A1? And the answer is it's still an empty list because all of the work inside here went to a new space in memory. If I say this is still storing um, my array in A1, inside of my function, it says, hey, um, does X, does X exist? Well, it's not an empty list, so the answer is true. And because the answer is true, instead of making changes to a variable called X in a new piece of memory, it's gonna store this in the old piece of memory. It's gonna append to that list. And so when I run this function, at the end of the day, I say, ooh, add a new record to a list in position A1. And so my result is going to be two. That's interesting. Um, but again, that's also why if the default value is an empty list, right, that's why we have this distinction between sending it here versus doing my logic test here. Okay. That, that got into a little bit deeper than I expected, but in any event, we have a, we have set up recursion. Rewind the clock. Beginning of the tutorial, our question was, can I get Jupyter content? Yes. Does the root behave, get Jupyter content, does it behave the way the API does? Yes, it just does what the API does, which it says query this content. How do I expect it to behave? I expect it to behave recursively. So I wrote a function called get content recursive that I'm going to call a root because I believe most people expect this API to interact recursively. Check. Done. Given that that is true, um, this time when I run my uh, recursive function, I expect it to loop over every folder and subfolder. And I expect to this time now include my great demo in my list of results. So I run this function. I can migrate. Oh, don't do that, please. I can see that my great demo is in fact in the result list. And just to prove that I'm not lying, it just occurred to me I could have done it up here. So this is the non-recursive version of it. My great demo is not in this list, whereas it is in my recursive list. Okay. Wrapping it up, what did we look at here? 
we looked at this idea that API root functions should just do what the API does. But sometimes if we always expect the API to behave differently, we might make a different function or modify the function. Um, to implement a recursive or get a list of all the folders and subfolders, we implemented a recursive function. A recursive function refers to itself. The key to making recursive functions work is this idea of passing a list into the recursive function, the recursive call. And the reason why this works is because, as we saw in this long-winded explanation, when I work with lists and dictionaries, they are both passed by reference to a space in memory where they live, as opposed to strings and integers that are passed by value. And so we saw some interesting interactions between what happens if I pass an, int, uh, an integer into a function and operate on something that has a similar name versus what happens if I pass a list or an empty list. And so these kind of slight nuances can kind of explain why Python sometimes behaves in weird ways. I'm going to stop the recording here. We're going to make it one last, I swear, one last video, and then I'm done recording for the day. <laughs>